What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 12, Episode 4. So we are still at La Quinta. Um, we start off at Kyle's home. It's the next day. Everybody's waking up. The women are sitting around talking. I think Dorit talked about how she had a hard time sleeping because of her PTSD from having um, her home burglar burglarized. Then they talk about Crystal. Um, Crystal, the issue there is they don't know exactly what triggered Crystal. I think um, Dorit said in her confessional something about whatever Crystal went through last year doesn't really hold a candle to what she went through. Now, okay, there's a lot of people that are very sympathetic with Dorit uh, and what she went through with the home invasion. But for you to start comparing whose tragedy was worse, whose trauma was worse, I don't think that's a good look. Garcelle calls Crystal and begs her to stop by uh, to talk to everybody because they want to get to the bottom of exactly what triggered her the night before. So in the meantime, they're all reminiscing about what happened a year ago in the very same spot because they were all at the same La Quinta home um, last year where it was like a lot of stuff went down. Um, Erica talks about how a year ago her life was in complete shambles. Now she can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. And so she's at a completely different space now than she was a year ago. Um, Erica talks about how she was absolutely dragged through the mud for something that never happened uh, and that she didn't even do. And Garcelle was like, well, you were dragged because you didn't show any, any, any compassion to the victims. And Erica says that she couldn't because of pending legal action. Now I've heard both sides where some people were like, she should have shown some type of compassion. And some people were like, well, she had to do what her lawyers told her and her lawyers probably told her not to show any compassion because showing compassion might be an admission of liability. So I mean, I don't know. I feel like she should listen to her lawyers. You know, you're paying them a lot of money for them to help you get out of this situation. And if they're telling you don't show any compassion, listen to your attorneys. It might look really cold and callous, but I can definitely see how the other side, the plaintiff's attorneys could use that to their advantage. Like, why would you feel bad about something that you claim never happened? So something must have happened for you to feel bad about because your whole premise is you didn't do anything and nothing happened. So yeah, I can kind of see why she decided to not show any type of compassion. It, it was best, you know, she has to protect herself. So she did what she had to do. So Erica says um, in her confessional, no, she tells the women that they're not even sure that there were people that weren't paid. And so all the women gasp and they're like clutching their pearls and they're like, oh my God, do you mean that they were lying and that they actually did get paid? And, you know, Erica's like, mm, you know, she, she plants that seed out there. So, um, like she, she basically alludes to the fact that there could possibly be victims who lied and actually did get paid. I think it's a lot more complex than this. Maybe there were victims who didn't get paid at all. Maybe there were victims who got paid, but not what, but did, but they didn't get paid their fair share. What was rightfully due to them, the entire amount that they deserved. So there's a lot of complexities to a case like this. So it can't be just as simple as, yeah, they're lying you know, they got paid. I know it can't be that simple. And for her to throw that out there, I mean, these people lost loved ones. So I just, I'm like, Erica, just please don't talk about the case at all on this show. You know, just don't do it because for her to allude, she doesn't want to show compassion, but then she wants to allude that they were lying. I mean, it's very tacky and distasteful that she would paint this picture of these people who lost loved ones, who probably lost limbs. Oh, just, it's just Erica, just don't do it. Just don't talk about the case at all. If you, if you don't, if you can't be compassionate, just be neutral and say nothing. So in her confessional, Erica says that people want to believe the negativity and they want her to fall. Uh, they just eat up anything negative about Erica Girardi. And she says that she will never fall and it will never, ever happen. Erica, please don't say, never say never, because you never know. The rug can be snatched from beneath you in a second. Do you understand me? In a second. Um, don't ever say that you will never fall, because you never know what might happen. 
So Erica says that she cannot admit to something that she knew nothing about. And the best that she can do is to do what's legally required of her to those who are rightfully wronged. Okay, that's fair enough, Erica. I'll accept that. And now Crystal arrives. But let's take a break from the La Quinta home and let's go to the resort or wherever the hell Sutton is staying. So Sutton and Diana are in Sutton's room and Sutton has a humongous spread of food laid out and there's nobody there but her and Diana. And you know, her and Diana probably don't really eat that much. None of these women eat that much on this show, but everywhere they go, there's like food upon food upon food. Hopefully the crew uh, partakes in all of this food when uh, the filming is over because this makes no sense that all this food was out there in Sutton's room. I mean, it was a, it was like she was holding a party for for 50 people it was that much food and it's just her and Diana you know nitpicking on some bacon and that was it so her and Diana talk about you know um triggers like what triggered people like what triggered whoever I don't even know who they were talking about and then Diana also talks about what triggered her and she says what triggers her is when people make fun of her accent and also um she talked about how Sutton is a fake vegetarian because she was eating bacon so back at Kyle's home, uh, Crystal is asked what triggered her and she starts crying. You know, I don't, I've never, how do I feel about Crystal? Last year, um, I didn't think Crystal really added much. You know, she confronted Sutton for possibly being racist or prejudiced. And that was like her contribution to the show. Um, so I, I don't, I mean, Crystal just doesn't really do it for me. I don't understand her purpose on this show. Um, Her character, I'm not really fond of. I don't know. So as soon as they ask her, look, so what really triggered you the night before? She starts crying. Okay, she's extremely emotional. So she said that she was triggered. I, I don't even know if this is correct. But she said that she was triggered by them accusing her of holding on to her feelings for an entire year. So after the whole thing she went through with Sutton barging into her room, her feeling violated, telling the other women that she felt violated by Sutton doing that. Um, she, I guess, really didn't express how she really felt. And so she's been holding on to these feelings for a year. And now she decides to to unleash them when everybody else has moved on. I could have sworn they talked about her feelings because they dismissed them. They talked, she did tell them how she felt about Sutton barging into her room. She says she felt violated, but they just dismissed how she felt. So I don't know what they mean that she was holding on to her feelings for a year. Maybe I misunderstood. So, Kyle apologizes again and says that she's sorry and that, you know, she's like a a fixer. She likes to fix people who she sees that are broken. And Garcelle was like, yeah, you're a fixer and you're a stir. You stir trouble too. And Kyle did not like that at all. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm a fixer. And (laughs) I thought that was really funny. Then Garcelle turns on Crystal. And she says that she believes Sutton was set up last year just for Crystal to tell her to say that famous line. Um, don't tell me that you're that girl. You're not that girl. Are you? You're the one that doesn't see color. So I was so confused because number one, why would Garcelle beg Crystal to come over just to basically attack her and say, you set up Sutton just so you can, I don't know, accuse her of being racist or you set her up just so that you can use your infamous line on her. But I don't know what Garcelle was alluding to about setting up Sutton. But why so why would you invite Crystal over if you had this issue with Crystal? Like you invited her over under the pretense of, oh, come on, girl, let's just, just come over. Let's talk about what happened last night. Let's try to resolve this. But then you turn around and you attack her. You accuse her of doing something, you know, that was kind of bad. So Crystal said that, well, you weren't there. So you don't know the dark things that Sutton had said before. So they asked her, what dark things did she say? And Crystal wouldn't say. So Kyle said, but I was there and I don't remember her saying anything dark. And then Crystal says, but you were drunk. So you don't remember. At this moment, Garcelle gets a call from her son who tells her that she got a, he got a job with um, Lisa Vanderpump. She announces this to the other women and they're all shocked. 
back. Now we're back in Beverly Hills. So we're with Dorit and PK. We find out that, oh, well, I, this is the first I ever heard of it, that uh, PK has diabetes and he really doesn't do all the things that he is supposed to do. PK, please take the diabetes seriously. Please take it very, very seriously. So there's more talk about Dorit's anxiety and her having PTSD. And so PK suggests that they all go on another vacation, that all the women go on another vacation. They just came back from La Quinta. So now they're going to be going somewhere else again. Now, back to Sutton. Sutton has this party. Um, I was very confused. I don't know if it was a birthday party or a party just to showcase this designer's work because her designer friend who finally made it through immigration, the one that, you know, Sutton was so worried about that she completely minimized what Dorit went through with the home invasion. Um, the, he finally arrived in the United States. And so she's going to have this party, I guess it's to show off his his work, his couture work. Um, so he's there and Kyle and Dorit, they're on their way to Sutton's party. And uh, on their way there, they talk about Lisa Rinna and they found out that her mother, Doris, has suffered a stroke. So Rena is with her mom at this present time. Then Kyle gets a message that says that someone, paparazzi or somebody, was taking pictures over the fence of her property. So that was kind of scary. And of course, that kind of probably triggered Dorit. So Erica was, was invited. She was definitely invited to the party, but she's not going because obviously her and Sutton hate each other. Um, and Sutton refused to apologize to her. So, you know, the feeling was mutual. So Kyle was like, you know, I mean, uh, Erica was like, I'm not even going to bother with that mess. When Dorit and Kyle arrived to Sutton's party, there is press there and Dorit had to bypass the press because she didn't want to answer questions about the home invasion. And so Dorit felt some kind of way that Sutton did not give her a heads up that there would be press there. What would that have changed, Dorit? You still avoided them. <laughs> what would that have changed? You wouldn't have come at all? Like, what are you talking about? So... Kyle talks to Sutton about what Crystal said about, you know, Crystal said that, you know, uh, when the, that when you had that conversation last year and she said to you, are you that girl that doesn't see color? Well, are you that girl? Um, she tells Sutton that um, C Crystal alluded to you saying something very, very dark and Sutton doesn't have time for this. She's like, you know what? That was last year. We're over that. A lot of water has passed under the bridge. I'm not going to go back and revisit that moment. I am living in the present time and I am moving forward. So Sutton is not going to give any light to this whole conversation. She's just not going to talk about it. So Kyle's like, okay, whatever. That's fine. So then Garcelle joins into the conversation and Kyle repeats what they just talked about. And Garcelle tells uh, Sutton, Crystal alluded that what you said previously what you had said would change it was so bad that it would change the dynamic of our relationship because it was so bad whatever you said and um like I said Sutton doesn't want to give it any light and Garcelle says well you need to watch you know watch your new friends Garcelle in her confessional says that Crystal probably felt really cornered so she threw Sutton under the bus by alleging that Chris that Sutton had said something that was you know very inflammatory now Sutton is you know positive Polly she doesn't want to talk about any negativity she wants to be happy you know a lot of light a lot of zen a lot of peace Sutton's not having any of the negativity so all the women get together and they're talking about this whole Crystal versus Sutton thing um Kyle so they want to know exactly what Sutton said they are really pressuring Crystal to tell them what was the dark thing that Sutton had said and Crystal says well um I will only tell you if you promise me that you're not going to get hung up on the word dark like the way that y'all got hung up on the word violated and they're like okay fine cool girl well, so what was that and she's like well what she said was very problematic and she never really said what Sutton said and Kyle once again was like I was there I don't remember Sutton saying anything problematic and Crystal once again dismisses her and says you were drunk Kyle you don't remember and Kyle was like stop saying that Stop saying that. I was not drunk. <laughs> okay. So it's a lot of like, what did she say? What did she say? What did she say? Crystal wouldn't do it. Sutton doesn't care. And so the ladies had no choice but to leave it at that. No one will ever know. And so 
the rest of the ladies are left in the dark about what was said that was so dark. I don't know. I don't get Crystal. I don't, I don't understand her at all. Like, why would you say this if you're not going to, y'all, that is like the biggest pet peeve of anybody, especially me. When someone hints at something, but then they don't want to tell you what was said or they don't want to tell you what happened, but they're going to hint at it. Why are you even hinting at it? Like, if you're not going to talk about it, keep it to yourself. She would have been much better off if she just would have played the victim about being violated when Sutton barged into her room when she had no clothes on and just kept it at that. But because of the fact that um, Garcelle was like, well, you know what? You, it, it was a setup. You set her up. So she felt cornered, like Garcelle said, and she was like, well, let me go ahead and just allude to the fact that, you know, Sutton is a, a raging racist and say that she, and, you know, claim that she says something really problematic. Well, what did she say that was so bad? Well, she's not going to tell you. Crystal, you're, you're annoying. You are annoying as hell, Crystal. But anyway, that's my little review of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Please don't forget to rate the video on your way out. If you like this content, subscribe. If you don't, don't worry about it. But thank you for stopping by anyway. And I will definitely talk to you later. Bye.